Hey, hey, welcome or welcome back. It is, as always, good to see you today. It's Tuesday. We're uh, getting this week started. Hopefully it'll, you know, go by quickly. And I hope you all are having a lovely start to your week. We do have a new Amberlynn Reed video. This one is titled, I'm done being silent. Drama, lies, tea, mess, so raw, episode three. You know, I, um, I just don't even know anymore with her. It's, and this one is 30 minutes long, so we're going to put her at one and a half speed. But a 30 minute long video. What's she done being silent about? She hasn't been silent about anything. She keeps talking about, oh, I've been silenced. I've been silenced. She has a YouTube channel where she can say whatever she wants. And my work laptop woke up. I just finished working. You know, what's she being silent about? She's not being silent. She's messaging reaction channels. She's saying whatever she wants on Instagram previously. She's saying all kinds of stuff in her videos. What's she being silent about? Oh, anyway. Let's see what this drama and lies are and what this tea. I don't... Whenever she spills tea tea on other people, it always gets her in trouble because it makes her look bad. I don't know. Let's let's hop into it. Hey guys, so welcome to So Raw episode three. Like, we're already on the third episode. I know some of you thought that I was gonna like end it after episode one. No, we are going until we can't go no longer. So before we get into this, I would like to say that this is me after barely sleeping for one hour. Like, I am so tired in these next clips, so I just wanted to warn you guys for the weirdness ahead. Why is she not asleep? Also, I'm sorry for the double chin angle view we have going on here. I'll work on a different angle next video. Why is she not sleeping? She doesn't have a regular job to go to. She can sleep whenever she wants. If she's that tired, don't record the video. Lay on and take a fucking nap. And I mean, I mean, is she not sleeping because she's busy messaging reaction channels at three in the morning? I don't, girl, just take a fucking nap if you can't sleep. What, what else do you have to do all day? Especially if your ankles hurt and you can't go out and go for walks. Today I am wearing my Barbie shirt because I am a Barbie. No, I'm just kidding. I I think Torrid's Barbie collection is always so cute and comfy. I personally like off the shoulder situation type deals. So I'm just like embracing it and loving it and just being a plus size Barbie queen. I actually think <sighs> myself plus size because I'm definitely not plus size. I'm super morbidly obese, but you know, let's just cringe together. Yes, my hair is a little cuckoo bananas today. So we're just going to also embrace that. So anyways, the first thing I want to talk about is kind of like a dehumanized update moment because oh for crying out loud oh what she got some new graphics here going on amberlynn's been keeping herself busy while she can't get up and do stuff I, let's see what she had this last episode i did talk to you guys about how i feel dehumanized and i read some of y'all's comments i read your guys' messages and a lot of you actually agree with me especially do they do they? Because I I haven't read through her comments. But granted, you know, you shouldn't invalidate somebody's feelings. But sometimes those feelings need to be grounded in reality a little bit. Like if you're having an argument with someone and you're just talking in a regular voice. And they're like, I feel like you're yelling at me. And you're like, but I'm not. I'm just, I'm just talking to you. There needs to be a little bit of grounding in reality there. And for Amberlynn to be like, I feel dehumanized. Just because somebody doesn't want to hear your opinion on world events from Miss, I think the moon landing was a hoax. Miss, I can't find Russia on a fucking map. Not everybody wants to know what you think about the war in Ukraine or the Queen's death. Or, oh, my phone. Or, you know, anything, really. Because you've never shown us any interest in any of these things. 
And people don't go to the Amberlynn Reed channel to learn about current events. They would go to a news station or news channel. So, yeah, you can... <laughs> You can stop with that whole, I, I feel dehumanized because people don't want to hear my opinion. An educated opinion, typically. In my private DMs, you guys make me feel so validated. So I completely appreciate that. And then there's a portion of people, especially in the comments. You're always going to have yes people around you. Like, oh yeah, you, you're you totally being dehumanized. You know, there, there's always going to be somebody that agrees with you. There's lots of flat earthers. <laughs> Doesn't mean the earth is flat. I noticed comments are brutal. It's like trendy to be mean to me. But in the comments, people were invalidating my feelings and how I felt. But I wanted to share a few more reasons why I feel like I am dehumanized on my channel. So this one for me is kind of hard. This also happened on Instagram. I'm not sure if it still is happening on Instagram, but this currently is happening on TikTok. So you search my name on TikTok and it says no results found. This phrase may be associated with behavior or content that violates our guidelines. Okay, how? How? Like literally, I have a TikTok. You guys can see it right here. I have a TikTok. I am not off of TikTok. I've never done anything bad on TikTok. Um, I was making money on TikTok at one point, um, but then they stopped the creator fund. So it's nothing that I have done on TikTok to create this to happen. And also this happened with, with Instagram as well. And I did nothing. I still have a profile on Instagram. I've never been kicked off of Instagram. So it was nothing I did. So in my head, I was like, okay, is it? But is Amberlynn Reed what you're associated with on TikTok or Instagram? Probably not. I think on TikTok, it's what, Rarity Cat? And on Instagram, she keeps changing her fucking name. So who knows? Let's, let's take a look here. Okay, here is TikTok. I am not signed in. Wait, maybe I am signed in. I don't know. Let's search Amberlynn Reed. It just says no results found for Amberlynn Reed. Let's look for accounts. This phrase. So it's it's not saying that it is violating. It's saying that it could violate. Let's look for what is it? Rarity cat. Yeah. Is that her right there? Yeah. Because she doesn't use Amberlynn Reed on her Instagram. She uses Rarity Cat. So let's search. I don't know. What do we want to search for? Let's search for. Oh, good Lord. I don't know. What do you even search for? Let's search for Twinkie Star. Sorry if I just moved my camera. Okay, so there's an account with that name. So that's why it's popping up. And then we're getting Twinkle Star. So let's search Amber Lynn. Okay, let's search. I don't know, French Fried Girl? That's an account, I think, isn't it? Yeah, things that people have made about French fries. But I I still don't think... It's it's just that people... Maybe if we do hashtag Amberlynn Reed. Yeah. If you could do hashtag Amberlynn Reed, there aren't... And, and then we have some accounts that pop up and we have some videos because of using the hashtag. So if we go to Instagram, which feel free to reach out to me on Instagram, but please let me know that you are from YouTube and give me your YouTube name. I had to block some creepy guy this morning. Okay, let's search Amberlynn Reed. Comes up just fine in Instagram. She comes up under curvy calories. So let's see what she was getting ready to say about Instagram. Sorry, my camera fell off. I had to reposition it. So let's let's see what she was getting ready to say about Instagram. Because on TikTok, it's just because Amberlynn Reed is not associated with her account in any shape or form, it seems, unless you do a hashtag. 
it's like all bullshit on that. It seems like what she's getting ready to say is that people have been putting such nasty stuff about me online that it's being associated with inappropriate content. No. Because I'm just controversial, if you will. So I thought of one of the most unlike bull fucking shit. <laughs> no, that is not why. And you come up just fine on Instagram. At least your curvy calories, because your velvet and honey doesn't have Amberlynn Reed associated with it, unless we put in maybe a hashtag. Right. YouTubers or what people would like to consider someone who is extremely unliked, which I completely disagree. And I looked up Trisha Paytas on TikTok. She's viewable. She There's tons of profiles with her name. There's hashtags, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, there's plenty of hashtags with your name, too. So I said, you know what? How about I try someone else? Shane Dawson. We all know the all the scandals, everything that he's done. Nope, he still pops up as well. So I was like, okay, well... Notice... His account name is also Shane Dawson. So let me show you something. TikTok. Try putting no space in there. Everything comes up just fine. You put a space in there. It doesn't know what to do with it. Because I don't believe you can have spaces in your names. And then hashtag. That's why people use dots like this because you can't have spaces so it, she's basically I'm saying she's an idiot <laughs> yeah I mean she's she's stupid when it comes to this to be honest it's that's not how TikTok naming conventions and searching works what's different about me like what did I What's different about you is you're an idiot and you put a space in there. Put in Amberlynn Reed, all one word. It'll pop up just fine. Ooh, I literally am just a small YouTube channel. So I tried to think, okay, so what's the differences between me, Trish, and Shane besides the obvious? Oh, I have an eating disorder. So I said, you know what? I'm going to go on the other side of the spectrum. Someone else on YouTube who has an eating disorder and people. Eugenia, Eugenia Yacuni, is that who you're going to put in? Will love to talk about it. Eugenia Cooney. Um, if I pronounce her name wrong, I do apologize. So I looked her up on um, TikTok. Well, there she is. There's a bunch of hashtags with her and a bunch of... Oh, woe is me. Oh, I'm a victim. Amber, what, why are you on this victim kick lately? Names with her. So why is there no results found for me? Think for three seconds. Yeah, I did think for three seconds. I think you're an idiot here. Let me even come down here. <clears throat> Try searching for Amber Lynn Reed on TikTok. Funny that. Results come up just fine. I just I just gotta be be an ass about it. Cause jeez. Oh, what could be being posted? I have seen several bullying fat shaming etc things on tiktok that have to do with me i've seen it people have sent it to me and this is just another way where i feel dehumanized anytime someone reduces a human being to a single characteristic especially a negative oh, one for they're fucks. dehumanizing nobody's dehumanizing you amberlynn what why i'm wondering if wifey is responsible for this new victim lynn era that we're in it's Anytime someone reduces a human being to a single characteristic, especially a negative one, they are they are dehumanizing. Alcoholic, addict, diabetic, and schizophrenic all rob people of the full complexity of their lives and reduce them to a symptom or disorder symptom or disorder. Those are also descriptive words. Somebody can be an alcoholic and you're not dehumanizing them by describing them as an alcoholic. Amber Lynn can be a stupid pain in the ass doesn't mean you're dehumanizing her. So some examples of that is alcoholic, addict, diabetic, schizophrenic. All this video is just pissing me off of already. And reduce them to a symptom or a disorder. This is literally 
how it feels. People call me fat. People call me liar. You guys have created this character, Liar Lynn, that doesn't even exist. You guys make me feel like my eating disorder is the- But that character does exist because you've lied about all kinds of stuff. You may not lie about things anymore, or very little. We all still think you're lying about wifey, which funny that you're calling her wifey again. But nobody is reducing you to a single thing because I think everybody realizes humans are multifaceted and you are more than your weight. Some people may see you as just your weight, but they're not dehumanizing you. The only thing that I am and me being super morbidly obese is the only thing that I am or, you know, my favorite. I'm a narcissist, according to a lot of people. So I noticed a lot of people didn't like that I used the word dehumanized. So I decided here are some other words that I want to show you. That also mean let's break out the thesaurus mean around the same thing to degrade to diminish to belittle all of those things sure people can belittle you that doesn't mean they're dehumanizing you two different things are happening people are degrading me how i look how i talk what i wear things that have happened with me in the past things happen with me in the present currently it doesn't matter what it is people diminish my accomplishments but they make my failures super freaking huge. Like it's, it's wild. I am belittled all the time. So people are asking, why are you talking about this now? Why are you talking about haters or haters? Because she's been silent for so long. Nation. Why are you talking about the reaction channels? It's because I'm finally using my voice. For so long, I let rumors become false facts because I didn't say anything. I didn't stand up for myself. I have had reaction channel after reaction channel after reaction channel just make money, laugh themselves to the bank because of me. They react to my content constantly, spreading speculation and rumors and lies. And it's like, I finally want to use my voice now and it doesn't matter. If they're speculating and spreading lies and people believe them, that's on them. I think most of the channels that do that sort of thing that say, I'm speculating here, but here's my thoughts on this. Make it clear that I think this is what's happening, or I'm just speculating. I don't have proof of this. I think most people say those things whenever they're about to say something that we don't have direct proof of. If I didn't do it before, all that matters is that I'm doing it now because for so long I stayed silent and I just, I don't think that's fair and I don't think that's right. I feel like you need to stand up for yourself. You need to use your voice. I know a lot of people just want to say, oh, ignore it, ignore it. It's different. Yeah, sure. Let's ignore someone telling me my hair is ugly. That's different. The shit that I'm talking about goes so much deeper. So I feel like I could talk about this for literally forever, but we're not going to do that. Um, I will continue this discussion on my channel. I will continue using my voice and sticking up. Why don't you give us concrete examples? Why don't you say, here's something that's been brought up that isn't true. Here's something that certain reaction channels are speculating on that are not true. Why don't you do that? Because until you say this specific thing, People are going to continue to believe whatever. For me, because I know I deserve better. I thoroughly do not think that I have done anything as bad as what people make me seem like. Of course you don't. You don't think you've done anything wrong ever and that you don't have anything to apologize for ever in the last seven or eight years. Not a damn thing. So the next thing is what happened to your merch? I have gotten this question so many times. So I figured I would answer it now. So the merch I made is simplistic. It's moderate in my opinion. It's funny. It's something that I would enjoy wearing. I personally don't like Haven't super gaudy or it. colorful merch. That's not my style. That's not what I want. And the simplicity of my merch, people took as Would love to see you wearing your merch that you love so much. Laziness. When you guys wouldn't even believe how long it took me to do this because I am me no understand. I do not understand how to do this. So this did take me some time. Um, and I liked what I made. I thoroughly did. And people were calling it lazy, saying how horrible it was, and that it was ugly and just all this stuff. And it's just like, that's the style that I wanted. Me. <laughs> I like the simplicity of it. I think it's cute. It's dainty. And it's not colorful and in your face because I don't want that to be my merch. So I decided to stop speaking about the merch because I started to feel dumb because so many people hated it and so many people called me lazy. Instead of just expressing your opinion and saying, this isn't my style, it's not something I'm into, I became lazy Lynn. And it's like, not I think people also thought the merch moment was kind of stupid. Nothing is ever good enough. Um, you could have made coffee mugs with like 
a row of books on it with your quote, books is good for the brain. You could have made bookmarks with the same thing on it, like like a little row of books and have it say books is good for the brain. Which is fine. Everyone has different clothing styles, different things that they like to wear, which I understand. I get that. But it's just like the fucking backlash was crazy over some simplistic merch. She could have also hired somebody on like Fiverr to help her design merchandise. Like there's bigger problems in the world, I promise. So in my first So Raw video, I'm pretty sure it was my first one, I talked about the first time I was taken from my parents in foster care. And I got some people saying like, what do you mean you were taken from your parents in a cop car? Like, you're such a liar. They don't put kids in cop cars. And I'm over here just like, they did, they do, and they will. I was actually taken they from will. my parents twice. Um, the one time that I told you guys, and then there was another time, um, it was actually a trial. Uh, my parents were able to fake it and say that they were sober, better improved, they had jobs, et cetera, et cetera. So me and my brother got to live with our parents as what they called a trial. And um, that trial was not successful. <laughs> uh, things actually got worse and things got bad. So I was actually a teenager, um, a very young teenager when this happened. And then I was actually taken from them again. And the story is so similar. I was at school. Yeah, I, I don't want to speculate about her experiences being taken from her parents or her foster care experiences because those are her personal experiences but i do know that police will absolutely come take you from your parents home that's i think how most states do it because who else has the authority to come in and take you from your home i got called into the office and there was a cop car um with a cop obviously and i got taken from them so both times i was taken from them it was a cop who picked up me and my brother and we went in a cop car so yes that happened both times people compare this to movies i'm like girl this isn't a movie this is my real life um people are like how come like in movies like it's never a cop that takes kids i think she's lying and i'm well, just like that's a movie this isn't a movie this is my real life and as a young child like when i was eight years old taken for the first time to be put in the back of a cop car is rather traumatic and i had other people say like well, how come, like, there was, like, a car seat in the cop car? That doesn't make sense. Well, I know for a fact that there was a car seat in the cop car because my brother was in the car seat, and it was his car seat. So when the cop picked up my brother from it our drug car seat. parents, they obviously got the car seat as well. Um, it's like I shared a, what, five-minute clip of me sharing something about my foster care, and it's like people literally had to dissect, dissect it so bad. They're like, no, none of that's true. It's just like, really? Come on now. So I just... Yeah, I, I don't think people should be dissecting her her experiences with that it's and then plus like she said she was eight years old she might understand some things more clearly as an adult looking back and being like oh this is why that happened or this is why they did this but from an eight-year-old perspective and you know it's it's going to be confusing and she's she might not remember everything exactly it has been a long time ago she was probably traumatized from it you know, there might be gaps. Just wanted to clarify that, yes, everything I said was completely true. Like, that is the point of these videos. And the point of my YouTube is I want to be vulnerable and I want to share things with you guys. And it's just, like, really hard to do when I feel like everything that I share is just, like, twisted into something it's not. So the next question, I actually got this from Instagram. Did you and YP have sex the first day you met? And we actually did. We don't need to go in. Well, yeah, because she flew in from, what, New York? To detail but i will say that I was really nervous but it was amazing of course so people are asking am i still doing scratch art why did i stop showing it in videos i'm actually not doing scratch art anymore and i'm not showing it in videos because i'm not doing it but also because you guys didn't want that anymore a lot of you were not interested um i actually watched this vlogger sarah ray vlogus love i love her vlogs like they just remind me of mine so low key. maybe if you show us you actually doing the scratch art instead of just here's the final pro uh final product and in one of the videos that I was watching from her, I'm behind her videos by like a few weeks behind on her videos. Sorry, guys, I got one hour of sleep. <laughs> We're going to talk more about my sleep schedule in some other video because we ain't got to do that right now. But I purposely got one hour of sleep to try to fix my sleeping schedule so I can actually fall asleep at a normal time. So I'm so tired. And that one hour of sleep consisted of like off and on sleep. So I technically haven't even slept in. It's been a, it's been a hot minute. So. I am very tired, but I'm trying to make myself tired so I can fall asleep at a normal time. Anyways, so I was watching this vlogger and she loves to talk about books. I'm right there with her. We both love reading, so I understand the passion behind it. And I love when she actually films and talks about books that she's reading, gives me ideas of what to read. And people in her comments were like telling her that it's boring, they're not interested in it. But the thing is, she tried to explain that like 
it's something that she's passionate about. It's something that she enjoys doing. So she wants to talk about it because she doesn't purposely do things for the vlog. She simply just vlogs her life. And that's kind of what I've tried to convey as well is like, I'm not purposely doing things in my life to vlog. I'm simply just vlogging the things in my life. And if it's books or scratch art or Legos, whatever it may be, um, I want to feel happy enough and content enough and safe enough to share those things on my channel. Even Share what you want to share about what you're doing. If people don't want to watch it, they won't. And if they will, or if, if they do want to watch it, they will. I mean, not everybody has an exciting life. If you want to show us you doing your scratch art, do it. I think people would rather watch you actually create the scratch art instead of just show us show us the finished project, like I just mentioned. Even if some people aren't interested, but that's what I feel like is fun about vlogs. You're watching someone else's life. You're watching them do things that maybe you don't do or some things that you do do. Sure. Um, do do. I just feel like when a lot of people start tearing me down um, when it comes to a certain something, it actually really does get to me mentally. So then I just try to take it away altogether. So when a lot of people were saying how like, I'm a little kid. Why am I doing scratch arts for kindergartners? I kind of just felt dumb about the whole thing and just took it off my channel. So, I you know, do what you want to do. Enjoy it. If you like coloring, if it's therapeutic and relaxing, do it. If doing the scratch art is therapeutic and relaxing and helps you not pick your skin, then do it. You had said that it helped you by keeping your hands busy. Who cares if people think it's for little kids? I play video games. I collect comic books and Funko Pops. I, I also build Legos. If my hands weren't arthritic, I would still draw and color and stuff. But if somebody thinks that's for little kids, fuck them. You do what you want to do. You're 31 years old. I want to talk about three conspiracies that I believe in. Okay. So before I get into this, we're not going to be arguing in the comments. We're not going to be calling each other stupid or unintelligent. This is just fun conspiracies. You know, it doesn't mean I'm right. I, I love conspiracies. Okay. So the first one is, I believe the before yeah, the moon lady, before she gets into that, I'm actually thinking about starting a conspiracy corner segment on my channel where I talk about different conspiracy theories. I just need to get the time to research and script and, Maybe it'll be like an every other week thing. Maybe. I'll start by debunking Amber Lynn's conspiracies here. Moon landing didn't happen. I just, there's a lot of proof. There's no, a there's not. No. Oh. No. Sorry. I got, got a little loud on that one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Seems like we were trying to make it to the moon before Russia. So we lied and said we did it. So another thing is I believe that a lot of astronaut clips is not really astronauts. In oh, for do you think they're in? Oh, my God. If my neighbor's outside right now walking his dog between our houses, he's going to be like, what the fuck is she doing up there? <laughs> what the in space. You can also go to YouTube and you can find actual clips of astronauts with wires. It's it's crazy, especially when you see the green screen. Where's the wire? There's no fucking wire. There's no green screen. Oh my god, are you fucking stupid? No. Nope. Okay, let's see what else she has to say. Green. Oh, that was that was embarrassing. I will admit. There was an astronaut in space, right? And they were like interviewing him. His finger got caught in his pocket. And then when they cut away from him, you saw the green screen. And it was Wh when where? No, you didn't. I am going to make a separate video about this section. It's going to be about the moon landing hoax and shit. Yeah. Disheartening. I know you guys probably think I'm dumb, but this is just one conspiracy. Yeah. Yeah, I do. This is why nobody wants to hear your fucking opinion on world events because of stupid shit like this. Okay. So the last one is I thoroughly believe that Stevie Wonder is not blind. <laughs> I'll do a separate video on this as well. Look at this clip, okay? 
how does he see in a loud room with loud people, loud singing, loud band, loud audience, how does he know that the microphone is falling? Like you can't hear that. The microphone, I have been near microphones like that and you don't hear those falling. Especially imagine all the music and the drums, like, cause there's, it's just like a crazy loud scene in the scene and I don't have it played because We'll do a separate video. I don't know about copyright or whatever. Tell me how that's possible. It don't add up. So those are just three fun conspiracies because people like to ask me like, what are some that you believe in or you think are interesting? When I say that I believe in them, I should have done a disclaimer. I wouldn't say that I thoroughly believe in them. So next question is, how did you get diagnosed with bipolar after just one session with a psychiatrist? So I was officially diagnosed with bipolar um, almost four years ago. And I did vlog the experience, if you will. It took one session. For the psychiatrist to know that I was bipolar and I was inaccurately diagnosed with depression for my whole life. Um, I was always diagnosed with depression. The first time I was ever diagnosed with depression was nine and I would go on these antidepressants and they would either make me more sad or they would make me angry or... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Sorry, sorry. My my brain didn't catch up to this part. I was still thinking about her fucking conspiracy theory bullshit. Sorry, I need to back up. I was officially diagnosed with bipolar um, almost four years ago. Okay. And I did vlog the experience, if you will. It took one session for the psychiatrist to know that I was bipolar and I was inaccurately diagnosed with depression for my whole life. Um, I was always diagnosed with depression. The first time I was ever okay, diagnosed depression. with depression was nine. And I would go on these antidepressants and they would either make me more sad or they would make me angry. Or, you know, I went through suicidal thoughts and I would self-harm myself. That is a side effect of a lot of the medications. And that's why you got to find the right one. And no antidepressant ever worked for me. And then I saw this psychiatrist almost four years ago and she said, they don't work for you because you're bipolar. You know, she talked to me, ran tests. Um, it was a couple hours visit. And I will say, I didn't know you could be diagnosed that quickly either, but she prescribed me a mood stabilizer, Lamictal, because hi, bipolar. And I was nervous. I was like, is this just going to be another situation where it makes me worse? No, it actually worked. It actually helped. My Manic episodes were far in between. My lows, uh, they were just tiny little dips, tiny little normal dips in my life instead of feeling like I'm buried, you know, underneath all just the sadness and dirt, like the Lamictal. I have to say, I'm glad that she was diagnosed and found a medication that works for her. I've never struggled with being bipolar, um, so I don't know what these things are like. Um, but I'm glad that she found a medication that worked completely changed my life. And that's how I know without a doubt that her diagnosis is true because finally we were able to put a diagnosis to my problems, get a medication that helped me. So I don't know how she did it. I went to the appointment. She did it. I still see the same psychiatrist for almost four years now. This psychiatrist has been in my life and she has changed my life because she listened to me when no one else would. And for that, I am so freaking appreciative. Like we found something that that works and now it's just up to me to take the damn medicine so we have a rumor yeah amber lynn is in a poly relationship so i'm gonna yeah oh goodness just no no i don't think she's in a poly relationship but i do think this is the original wifey this isn't some new alex or some new chick let y'all know right here right now i'm a one gal type of gal i only want to be with one person I only want to love one person and make love to one person. I want that one person to be my best friend, my lover, my my other half. And I need that to be the same energy. From I don't have time for more than one person. I barely have time for one person. Not that I dated anybody in a while, long while, but not the point. My other half. I have to be their one and only. So no, I'm not in a poly relationship. My partner is not in a poly relationship. It's just us. Me and wifey. That's it. I will never, ever be. Is it wifey? In a poly relationship. I am way too jealous. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. I'm way too jealous. And thankfully, my girlfriend doesn't want that. So if you're poly, be with poly. But if you're monogamous, never change for anyone. Okay. So people have been asking my opinion on Nikocado Avocado and how he like shades me all the time and all this stuff. And honestly, my opinion is just that I'm just queen. I'm his muse. I'm entertaining. And. <laughs> Queen Lynn. And I inspire him to be funny and quirky and dainty. So my opinion is that I love that for him. And I hope he continues on the journey of trying to be my uh, clone or something. I don't 
I hope Nikocado starts to lose weight. No, he seems a little obsessed. Okay, so advice segment. I hate my boyfriend's cooking. I always lie and say I like it because I don't want to hurt his feelings. Should I be honest? So I have been in this situation yes. in the past. Thankfully, not with my current girlfriend. I'm not going to say who, but in the past, I have ate people's cooking that I was like, uh, I've eaten. And nine times out of 10, actually 10 times out of 10, I just lie and said I liked it. You know, it's like those little white lies. Oh, let me get it now. The reaction channels. Amber Lane admitting to lying. We all do it. We all do it. We don't want to hurt someone's feelings. But as I've gotten a little older, I realized that like, especially if you're in a relationship with someone and they like to cook for you or they cook often for you, if you tell them you like their food, they're going to keep cooking it. <laughs> so I think you should just be honest. Um, do it nicely or depending on your relationship, be funny about it. Maybe joke about it. I don't know. Like everyone's relationship is different. It could just be something particular you don't like, like a certain spice or flavor in it. Like I don't like cilantro. So if I were to be with someone that maybe a dish that had lots of cilantro in it, I wouldn't like it. I would hope I would have told them previously that I don't like cilantro. But sometimes somebody's just not a good cook. That's that's one of my biggest fears when I cook for somebody is they're not going to like it. And so I try to not cook for people very often. I mean, like I've cooked for my siblings. And I did cook for my ex-girlfriend. But I was always super nervous about it, and I'd usually be so distracted, and I would end up screwing something up. It it would come out okay, but yeah, it it it's it's something to be concerned about. Um, an ex ex girlfriend girlfriend before my last girlfriend, I didn't like her cooking because she used way too much seasoning for my taste and too much oil it was very greasy i didn't like it. it it upset my stomach different i know in my case like if my girlfriend ever made something that i didn't like which thankfully that has not happened um i mean like i'm here's a perfect example i'm super weird when it comes to like meat chicken etc my girlfriend knows how to make chicken like how everyone likes it juicy tasty and all that but like i like mine dry i like mine so dry and so she'll make mine like that for me and there has been times in the past where like it wasn't dry enough and I was just honest about it you know it's just you have to be honest with things like that especially like I also like my food to be a little bit dry that could be from growing up that could be because maybe that's how my mom cooked it or I also I know people give Amberlynn crap about larger pieces of meat but I understand why she has issues with larger pieces of meat because if you're at a restaurant or something and you're cooking all of these different pieces of meat that are different sizes, but all for the same length of time. I think the concern in the back of Amberlynn's mind is the bigger pieces aren't done all the way through. That's always kind of in the back of my mind. Like whenever I order Chinese food, I don't like a lot of the bigger pieces either for that exact reason. I also like my chicken a little bit dry. I also like juicy chicken too. But... Yeah, I, I totally get where she's coming from when it comes to the meats and textures and things of that nature. Just being in a relationship in general, just be honest with your boyfriend. So next segment that's just going to go by really quick um, is my favorites. Just, you know, so my favorite movie is A Simple Favor. My favorite song currently is TV by Billie Eilish. My favorite color is mauve. This like dusty mauve. Is that even how you pronounce it? Who knows? Mauve. My favorite number is one. My favorite of course holiday it is. is Christmas. My favorite animal is panther. My favorite oh, look at that little kitty. Oh, it's not the kitty anymore. Is this Jersey Shore or this the Kardashians? What is this? Show is Jersey Shore. That is Jersey Shore. Oh, really? It's not 90 Day Fiance? My favorite food is rice. Rice. Which, not just like white rice. It could be any sort of rice. And my I favorite like celebrity rice. is Lake Lively. I mean, queen shit. You know what I'm saying? And my favorite hobby is Legos. So the reason why I Legos. did that segment is because I feel like I answer so many serious things like all the time. I do get like random little questions of people asking me like, so what's your favorite song? What's your favorite movie? You know, what's your favorite food? And I never really answer those. So I figured just real quick off the top of my head type style to answer those real quick. All right. So it is time for. I'm probably going to skip these because I don't care. Random facts. All right, folks. It's about that time. Oh, this is gross. Maggots are still used to clean wounds. In fact, as recently as 2004, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration permitted 
the production and marketing of maggots for limited use as a medical device. Because I don't think I'm ever opening this book again. <laughs> because they'll eat the decaying flesh. Or the dead flesh and clean clean it, basically. Oh, random fact about me. Maggots is one of my worst fears. I like, it, oh, oh, God. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. So that is the end of this. Like, I don't mean to make these seem super ranty, like I'm raging or you whatever. Kind of are. But I do have to speak up for myself. And I do have to stick up for myself and use my voice. And it's just like these reaction channels, they get to spend all day and every day just talking about me. And the minute I talk about them... Because it's entertaining. You can talk about anybody you want to talk about, but... I think it's weird you're sliding into people's DMs trying to stir up shit. Which is about me. I'm attacked for it. I should ignore it. No. No. I don't see it that way anymore. I should be allowed mm. to confirm if something's a rumor or not. I should be allowed to talk about... Well, yeah, but you didn't. You didn't You didn't talk about any rumors from, from reaction channels. You didn't bring up anything. Speculations and just try to clear things up because... Too many times have I let things slide and they just got way bigger than they needed to be. So anyways, um, if you guys have anything you want me to talk about, topics, whatever it may be, you can message me on Instagram at velvet.and.honey um, or just comments below because I do read comments now um, or community posts because I like to post community posts so you guys can give me topics to talk about. I'm sure you guys can tell I am beyond tired. I feel like I'm rambling and making absolutely no sense. But I had to film this video. I probably should have waited to do my whole don't sleep situation type deal for another day. But you know what? Today's Monday. I wanted to film this for you guys. Start off my Monday being awake at a like normal decent time because my sleeping schedule has been horrific. But I wanted to be awake in the morning. I wanted to experience life in the morning. So I was like, you know what? This hour of sleep is just going to have to be it. So that's that. Have you guys ever heard of the term slap happy? <laughs> Yes, like, Amber. Okay, wait, wait, have... wait, wait. Let me look up the defo, the definition oh, of this. Oh, for cause... fuck's sake. I feel slap happy. <laughs> wait, what? I only thought slap happy meant like you're so tired, you're like loopy. It's almost like you took a few shots of alcohol. My bad. Did not happen. I actually have not drank since April, since that live stream. Since the live stream. So, yeah. Uh, happy. Casual or flippant in a cheerful and often irresponsible way. Days are stupefied by or as if by a series of blows to the head. Okay. Um. Oh, yeah, I found it on Urban Dictionary. Slap happy. Term used to describe one's mood when sleep deprived or tired. Signs of being slap happy include. And name rambling, strange remarks, odd random behavior, such as giving oneself a wedgie, uncontrollable laughter at one's jokes. So there it is. I was right. I'm going to go now since I'm slap happy. <laughs> I'll definitely be falling asleep at a uh, normal time. Thank God. But I hope you guys did enjoy this raw episode. Hopefully it wasn't a flop. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. All right. Well, I... <laughs> oh, good Lord. So many things to address in that video. I'll be making a separate video for some of these. Uh, the whole conspiracy that she's interested in or believes in. Yeah, victim Lynn. Um... She likes to play the victim lately. Uh, that seems to be the era we're in. We're in the victim Lynn era. And it's not a good look. She needs to take accountability for herself and her actions and things that she's done. And then I think that might get some people back on her side from some of her haters. It may or may not. But until then, I don't know. So that's all I got for you on this one, folks. Let me know what you think down below. And until next time, be safe and take care.